The reason why I did this video, right, is because I saw on social media that some woman had a staffy, beautiful dog, actually, a blue staffy. And um, I, was just, I was just like, oh, my God, give that dog to me. But what happened is that the dog was always on the bed. They were, From what I saw in the videos, the dog was on the bed and it was biting them. It actually had bite marks and they were showing the bite marks on social media. And um, I could see blatantly that it wasn't the dog that was at fault. It was the way they were treating the dog. They were trying to mother this dog, always cuddling it, always being affectionate to it, letting it on the bed. There was no leadership, no no boss in the house. So the dog has taken over the house and then and bit the um, owners a few times, right? And they ended up um, putting it down, putting it to sleep, uh, calling it behavioural euthanasia. And I was there thinking, oh my God, see, this is the problem. People take on dogs, they don't understand the breed, and then they call it, they basically say that it's a behavioural problem when it's not, it blatantly not a behavioural problem. It's just because there was no boss in the house and the dog was basically the boss. But the dog was beautiful. If I, I, I just wish I had a farm or something, I could have just taken it off of her hands and I would have dealt with it and it would have been a fine, good sport dog. But there you go. So the, that's part of the reason why I decided to do this video because I'm sick of seeing this kind of thing on the TV. There, I mean, sorry, on social media. There are um, dogs that aren't that you can't help, but there's so many that I'm seeing that you can, that can be helped, and it's because of the way the owners treating the dogs. Staffies are not babies. I know people put hats on them and they put banners and banner glavers, and some staffies will put up with it, but they are tolerating it. They're not babies. Their genes are not. They're not, they like, they like cuddles and they like being um, Velcro and they like you cuddling them. But they also need to, a leader. They also need leadership. If you don't become their leader, they will lead you. And that's what I'm seeing on the internet so often. This video isn't really to be negative about Staffies. It's not to be negative about any, any breed. Um, but I really felt compelled to do this video for the sake of the breed itself and mixes. So I decided to give you five reasons why not to get a bull terrier if you have a staffy already or any, any kind of bull breed then you'll understand the breed and you'll know what i'm talking about um but really it's for people that haven't had the breed before and are thinking about maybe getting one um and are not 100 percent sure whether to get one and uh, what are the pros and cons i've done a few videos um in the past i'm going to have a look at them that have given you other ideas about uh why maybe to have one but this one is specifically to point out a few things that may put you off um, and it's better to know before you get the dog for the sake of the dog's sake and for you really do you know what i mean you don't want to lose a dog once you've got one apart from my two mixes i've had staffies in the past and i've always found number one velcro if you don't like dogs that are in that i need they're not dependent uh, dogs if you don't like, like dogs that always want to follow you around the house always want to be with you um and have potential separation anxiety when you leave the, the house, um, then a staffable terrier probably isn't the right dog for you. You need to, as a puppy, get it desensitised to leave, being left on its own. Just leave it alone, let it stay on its own for a little period and build it up. Um, but generally they don't really like being on their own and you may have a destructive dog if you don't deal with it properly when they're young. You can deal with um, older dogs, but it just makes it harder, you know. So the first one I would say is if you don't like Velcro dogs, dogs that always want to be around you, that aren't that independent, then maybe a Staffy isn't for you. And remember, certain behaviours and breeds can be dealt with. They can be nurtured. They can be put right. But what I'm saying is, is that you, this is what you're going to be starting off with. So it's, you know, it's something that you're going to have to keep in mind if you're going to go and get a Staffy Terrier, that it's possible that it could end up with suppression anxiety if you don't deal with it as a pup. That's the point I'm making, yeah. Number two, um, their coats. They've got very thin coats, um, stuffable terriers on, and mixes. Depends on what you, you mix your dog with. With my girl, she's Mastiff, so she's just got that fluffy Mastiff coat, so it protects her. But with my boy, he's got a typical Staffy, staffy coat, and he is prone to fox's mane. She's had it a couple of times. Um, it's easy to get rid of. You can get rid of it with a vet with some spot on, but it's just annoying, and it's and it's a pro they're prone to it because they've got thin coats. So you have to make sure you check in the coat all the time, making sure that you don't, you know, look for patches and things like that. Um, just know that it's a possibility that he's going to get mange. Your dog's going to get mange at some point. The other thing is grooming. They shed all year, um, little spiky fur um, all year. My dog sheds a lot, even though he's got a thin coat. He sheds more than my girl. Um, so grooming is important. And the last thing is, is that they generally all get cold. I haven't known of, I haven't known of a staffy or a staffy mix that doesn't get cold in the winter because of their thin uh, fur. So keep that in mind. If that's not going to be, if you're not going to be able to cope with that, just don't get the staff, don't get the dog, because it's, it's going to be inevitable, guaranteed. Three, 
Um, mm, this is one that is kind of funny, really, because you see a lot of people on the net showing their dogs as aggressive and this and that and that. But the thing about Staffies and mixes, depend on, I just say depending on what you mix with, because my girl's mixed with Mastiff, so she has the Mastiff trait, that Guardian breed trait. But my boy is mixed with Bulldog and just generally Staffy Double Terriers, the, the pedigree ones. They are not aggressive towards humans. They are not good guard dogs. They are they are human friendly. Um, back in the day in the 1930s when they were pit, called pit dogs, the people had to go into the pit when they were fighting dogs. They had to go into the pit and they had to get their dogs out without getting bit themselves. So they used to cull any dogs that were human aggressive. And that is the reason why nowadays you get uh, staffies that are pretty friendly to human beings. Um, dogs, but humans, don't. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you're looking for a guard dog, don't get staffy. Not unless you, not unless it's mixed with Mastiff. <laughs> Four. Now this one, oh, this winds me up, if I'm honest. This is a pet hate. You know when you see people with their dogs as stuffies like this, I've just taken a few pictures right, of my own dogs with hats on to show you what I mean. When you're going to buy a staffy, right, you must remember that there are different types of staffies. Different breeders breed different types. You're going to get the French Bulldog looking types, which are really short, short body. You're going to get the taller. You're going to get the um, Irish staffs. You're going to get the muscular staffs, the sporty staffs. There's a whole range of staffies. You just need to know which one you get, you're get. you getting. Be careful, be careful, because if you're somebody that wants a, um, a couch potato, then you might be better off going and get the French Bulldog short bodied short staff. I mean, really, to me, no stuffy should be a catch potato, but they are breeding them short and small and French bulldog like that. But if you're, if you're somebody that wants a sport dog, then you need to make sure that you're going for that type of stuffy. Um, and if you want something more robust, etc., make sure you're going for that type of stuffy. So you could end up getting a stuffy, the type of stuffy that you don't want and that you won't be able to cope with. Staffordable Terriers are not generally dog friendly. And I say this, I don't mean that they're aggressive. I mean that they're not, they, they, they don't, they tolerate other, other dogs. They tolerate them. So when, let's not put aside the fact that, you know, in a, set, in a litter of dogs, you're going to get different, different levels. You're going to get the passive, you're going to get the bolshy one, you're going to get, you see what I mean, yeah? But just generally as a breed, they were actually bred, bred to f dog, uh, fight dogs. Um, although they're not like that anymore and, they ha and that has been bred out, they still have the genes of the terrier gene, the prey drive, the um, the stubbornness, the moodiness, the the bulge, the bold um, bulldoggy typeness. And so as a puppy, your dogs will be playful. But when they get to about three years old, they may switch. You may end up with a dog with stuffy that switches and then suddenly doesn't like other dogs. And then you're thinking, what have I done wrong? But it's not that you've done anything wrong. It's just that their genes have kicked in and they become an adult dog. And now they don't like um other dogs my dogs i've socialized them since they were babies they, they're not aggressive to other dogs but they don't like other dogs coming into their environment it's when the other dogs come into their environment all bolshy and, and pushy it switches on that gene that gene that fighting gene <laughs> that old fighting gene it kind of switches on like who the hell do you think you are coming into our patch kind of like that so you just got to keep an eye on your dogs when they get to adults um they're not like aggressive dogs, like they're not going to go out of their way to have a fight or anything, but they, they will stand their ground. You've just got to keep that in mind. So if you're not somebody that knows how to train a dog, train that type of, type of stubborn dog, um, and, and you're not prepared for that kind of thing, you want a gentle dog that's always going to be gentle, then Staffy is definitely not going to be for you. So number five. Number five is that, I mean, every dog needs exercise, but if you've got a particular type of Staffy, you're going to give it you're going to need to give it a lot of exercise staffies can become uh, catch potatoes but it's not good for their body like for instance when we've been out of action sometimes we've been, like for instance the covid times and all that when we were out of action uh, my girl suffered with her tits every time she would have a season this is an example every time she would have a season right her tits would then afterwards lactate um and i knew that it was because of a lack of exercise like a lot of people will say, oh, take her to the vet and this and that. Oh, she needs she needs pills and this and that. But no, it was purely exercise. So when we got back to exercising again, 
good exercising, I'm talking like running, sprinting, all the stuff that um, we normally do, um, she didn't have any lactating tits. So, you know, it proves in the pie. So the point that I'm making is, is that if you have a stuffy, there are certain dogs, right, that need exercise for their bodies to function properly because it helps them get rid of the toxins in their body. So if you have a stuffy, for instance, which is a high drive, potentially a high drive dog, energetic terrier dog, you need to exercise it. So if you're not prepared to give it that extra stimulation, mental stimulation and physical stimulation, if you want a couch potato, get a greyhound. <laughs> Don't get a stuffy. Do you know what I mean? That's that's it.